Hello, Rebel. Hello. I usually say hi, Carrie, but today it's hi, Rebel. Yeah. Thanks for subbing in. Absolutely. Today. You were thrilled to do this, I know. So thrilled. You know how, uh, you know what I appreciate though? Is you're like, I was texting you last night, hey, um, what do you want to talk about? And you're like, I just figured I'd show up and you'd tell me. Mm-hmm. If that doesn't speak to your confidence, that's, I feel like you've come a long way. Wow. And that you're like, whatever, just tell me whatever. Or you've given up. <laughs> Probably a little bit of both. <laughs> Isn't, is, maybe that's what confidence is. I've just given up. I've just on, given up, yeah. In some ways, that's true. You've given up on worrying about stuff. I'm yeah, just going to be okay. Important. I'm just yeah. going to be fine. That's cool. We just stumbled onto something. That sounds like a, a new episode or something we can uh, copyright or <laughs> trademark. Yes. Confidence is giving up. Put that on a t-shirt. Yeah. Oh, I like it. Let's do it. There you go. We start a new clothing line with all the other things that we have to do <laughs> that don't make us money. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Uh, but thanks for being willing to sub in for Carrie. Carrie's not here. We missed a week last week, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was, I was starting to feel like it's been, I, I really do like this time of day because it is like this hour of the week is just relaxing or we can kind of debrief about something that's important, breathe a little bit, not worry about the world out there while we solve it all in here. Right. So, so we are going to talk about the many faces of courage. Um, We're calling it that for a specific reason, but we're going to get to that in just a minute. So don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We Welcome to Therapist Take. Um, I am here today with my guest host, Rebel. So Carrie is on vacation this week, and Rebel um, graciously has agreed to sit in. And I'm so glad you have, too, because um, the EMDR episode you and Carrie did was great. Like, it's one of my favorites. Awesome. It, it just, everybody knows it's, it's not a narcissistic thing, I promise, but I have to listen to these episodes over and over to see how they sound and to make the changes and stuff. But that episode was truly, really good. I've actually sent it to um, uh, a few different people that have been considering doing EMDR. And it's just a really good and informative. And you guys, your flow is really good. Again, the cadence is best if you're listening to it at 1.25 time. <clears throat> That's always my plug. Do you do that? I don't even know what that is. You don't know how to speed up your podcast when you listen to it? No. You can do that. Why would you do that? <laughs> Some people talk slow, I guess. I don't know. Like, you know, I need people. Well, here's here's the weird thing about it. It's like, so you speed it up like 1.25 or one and a half time, and it does, you know, you can tell the difference. But then after a while, that just starts uh, starts sounding normal. And then you can go up to 1.75. And some some things I will listen to at like 2.25. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it sounds normal. And then when I'm around regular people, I'm like, oh, would, you, would you hurry up? <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to Audible today. I've been re- reading my book. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. But when I was listening to us, I was like that. When I sped it up like 1.25, I was like, that's a pretty good cadence. So, hmm. yeah. Good to know. Yeah. There everybody goes. Little trick if you, to your podcast if you don't know already. So... Um, before we get started, let me just remind everybody to um, at first just thank thank you for being here and supporting our, our channel, supporting our podcast. I uh, just want to remind you to uh, subscribe to our channel if you're watching this on YouTube. Even if, and if you're not, please head on over to YouTube to do that. And if you are listening to this on the podcast, because what we usually do is film these live. And then, you know, usually somewhere between a week, 10 days, sometimes two weeks, I'll transfer it over onto the audio platform. Usually on Mondays is usually when it goes live. Um, and, uh, you know, if you like listening to podcasts instead, uh, please uh You know, follow us, uh, Therapist Take Podcast, and give us a five-star review. And if you really feel generous, you can write something nice about us. So, um, all right, that takes care of the housekeeping stuff. Let's talk about just a little bit what we're going to cover today. We're talking about the many faces of courage. Um, And we'll put the structure on screen for those of you that are watching this on YouTube or Facebook. Um, 
And so the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, just the challenges in defining courage. So we're going to that's, we'll get into that right off the cusp. We're going to talk about paradoxical courage. Sounds interesting. Um, the problem with cowardice. And uh, Hannah's going to love that one because I'm going to bring up her favorite book. And then um, the power of short-lived bravery. So that's what we're going to do today. Awesome. I yeah. can't wait. Yeah. So when you saw, I mean, you, I kind of let the cat out of the bag. Before you got here by posting it on Facebook, you saw that we were going to do something on courage. What was your first immediate thought about that? Um, I think I just thought, oh, good. That's something that I know a little bit about. Courage. Oh. I know. Because you do it all the time. Do I? Do I? <laughs> Are you doing it now? Um, it is something that I've had to learn mm -hmm. to be courageous. Yeah. Absolutely. I think you've got some of the most amazing stories of courage. Mm. I really do. Do you? Can, can, can I bring one up and you tell the story? You know it's my favorite one. <laughs> it is my favorite story, Rebel Sure, World, Josh. Please. Sure. Okay. Go for it. Um, when <laughs> your, your plane story, Rebel was, is... What I don't know if we say is or was. I don't know how it works in the world of being a pilot, but you, at least at one point in time, were a trained pilot. You were working towards your pilot's license. I was. And you have a really cool story that I think is amazing. I mean, I'm just... When, I, when you told me this story, I'm like... In, in, like, you were my hero for a little bit. <laughs> mm. After I get past the embarrassment part. Well, I, that's what's yeah. so interesting about it. And, and I think that's going to fit right into what we're going to talk about in terms of how, you know, I think one of the questions I put on the description of the video or before of this podcast was like, how, how come sometimes we, or, or is it possible that we do courageous things and don't feel courageous about it? I think that happens all the time. I think this likely might be one of those for you because mm -hmm. it truly is like a courageous story. Now, as we get in it, you might realize I had no choice. <laughs> I mean, it was... But, survival yeah so tell us a story real quickly okay so learning to fly yes trying to get my pilot's license um i was doing one of my first solo flights it was my long solo flight um so flew up to ponca city um which is north of where we are oklahoma city um and landed and was supposed to fly back um on the route back to Oklahoma mm -hmm. City. It's all on the um, way over there. Perfect. No problems. Perfect. No problems. I landed. I went into the airport, had a beer. Coke. No, I'm just kidding. no, I did not <laughs> Coke or something and just kind of yeah. recentered myself, kind of got my bearings, um, and was ready to fly home. So on route home, um, started to notice that there were no um, buildings, that there were no houses, and I was like, I don't understand, like, I should be seeing Guthrie, or I should be seeing Edmond. And was it supposed to be the same route you took there, or were you taking a different route? No, it was same route. Same route, so okay. straight north. Well, obviously, you're on a different route at this and point. Then, <laughs> well, right, yeah. right, but then straight south. Okay, gotcha. Um, and there was just nothing. Um, but then I saw this body of water and I was like, oh, that is fantastic. That's Lake Arcadia. So I'll sh I should be seeing Edmund soon. Right. Um, so Lake Arcadia, for anybody listening to this, not from around this area, that is a lake right here in the Oklahoma City area. Yep. And where were, what, which airport were you flying back to? Uh, Wiley Post. Wiley Post, which is in Oklahoma City. Right. Bethany. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, saw Lake Arcadia, but there were still no houses, still no buildings. So I decided that that was not Lake Arcadia. So started to kind of look around and all I saw were fields. Um, and I knew at that point that I was not anywhere near Oklahoma City. I had no idea where it was. Oh my gosh. Um, I, every time you tell this story, it's like the first time for me. <laughs> Keep going. <sighs> Keep so going. I'm glued. What's, like, what's going to happen? <laughs> I know. Well, I, I'm thinking that too, right? In the plane. I'm like, I don't know where I am. I don't yeah. know how much fuel I have. Like, I just know that I've got to land this plane. And so I'm starting to think, okay, I'm going to have to land in a field. Um, so kind of looking for a field that is decent, I guess, and have no high lines or power lines. Yeah. 
Um, and I came across the airport. Thank heavens. Oh, my God. Um, so I couldn't call in. I didn't know where I was. Um, so I just landed at this airport. Thankfully, mm-hmm. there were no other planes right. flying in or out. Um, but I just landed. Um, embarrassingly enough, walked into the airport and was like, I don't know where I am. Could you please tell me where I am? Oh, my gosh. So, Where yeah. were you? I was in uh, Alva. 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 Well, that's way south, or right? Nope, it's west. So west. instead of oh, stri- yeah. flying okay. south, I flew straight west. Okay. Yeah. So what was the lake you were seeing then? Oh, that was the Great Salt Plains. Oh, my God. It wasn't even a lake. It wasn't even a lake. It was the Great Salt Plains. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. Wonderful. Right. Right. So. Oh, man. So many questions. Um, like, at one point when you're up there, you're like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. Did that I ever was. Cross? Yeah. Because I'm like, this is my first long solo flight. Yeah. I didn't know where I was. Um I obviously have landed the plane before, but I don't know yep. how to land a plane in a field. Yeah, but you're willing yeah. to. But I was willing to. Yeah. So what's so. your next thought? Like, oh my gosh, I want to tear up this plane. It doesn't belong to me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Really? Yeah. And then I'm like, well, I hope the plane yeah. has insurance. I hope I have oh, insurance. I which can't one even came remember. first? Which thought came first? I want to tear this plane up or, oh my God, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, that, that needs to be the first one. That, yeah, that is. And then I was like, so then the probably the second thought was about my parents. How are uh, they going to? Right. I was. Yeah. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's okay if I bring, say yeah. that they, yeah. you lost a sibling. Yeah. Your parents already lost one sibling. And so you were the only. So yeah. you were probably thinking like, oh my gosh, I want to leave them right. childless. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. Wow. Man. But you made it. You're here. So that is always my conclusion, or when I conclude the story, is I landed the freaking plane. So are you still embarrassed about it? Um, Yeah. Or you can feel the sense of embarrassment? I mean, I am embarrassed that I flew the wrong direction. That is embarrassing. But when Uh you tell the story, like, do you not... Do you intentionally not tell it because it's imb- you feel like it's an embarrassing story? No, I think everybody pretty much in my circle knows my story by now. So okay, no, so. well, not just now, but like right now, like it was. Yeah. You still feel like it's an embarrassing story, or parts of it? Okay, because yeah. yeah. I, I just think it's such a courageous story. I mean, I mean, I think just you being willing to fly a plane, first of all, like I think that takes a lot of courage. But um. I mean, I know there's like this this point where it's like you know you have no other options. You got to do something, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. I still think that you know that even at the point where you feel like your back's against the wall, it, to do something still requires courage, just of some type of courage, some level of courage. Yeah, yeah. No, and, I mean, I completely yeah. agree. And and being able to find an airport, mm-hmm. you know, instead of yeah. giving up, absolutely. Yeah, and your willingness to land in a field. Yes. Like you were going to land in a field if you yes. had to. You know what? Actually, I think maybe one of my first thoughts was I'm going to be all over the freaking news because my plane crashed in a field. Oh, so embarrassment went to the top. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So. Yeah. But, oh, hmm. great. I want to die in, in an embarrassing way. I'm going to uh-huh. be, what is that list called? Like, uh, um, that uh, when people die in silly ways, um, Darwin. I'm gonna get. A, I'm gonna have a Darwin mm-hmm. Award mm-hmm. on this one. I'm gonna make mm-hmm. the Darwin Awards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Oh. Well, I'm glad you didn't. Well, thank you. And I'm glad you. I'm, you. Because I'm glad for the story and that you are here. Right, <laughs> right. Thank you. But I love the story. It's really one of my favorite stories about you. I love it when you tell it. It's it is like hearing it for the first time every time you tell it. Yeah. But I mean, it's it does go to show like even like. Like, uh, I don't know if it's humility, shame, or what is it that makes us not allow ourselves to feel, to to take a step and go, you know, that was a courageous thing I did. And I think, you know, we're really quick to dismiss Mm -hmm. our courage and, and, uh, you know, the driving force behind that can be a lot of different things, but, or a combination of things. Combination, yeah. You know, um, I do think it's it's good to have 
a hint of humility in there. You don't you really don't want to be that person walking around talking about all the courageous things you did, you know. But I do think it's also okay for for you to reflect on that story and go, yeah, it's, it was kind of badass of me to do that, you know. I mean, I'm not going out holding a sign up. Mm-hmm. saying i'm a badass with an arrow pointing at me yeah, i did land the plane uh, yes <laughs> and yeah. that's it you've all and that's uh, something you, you always make sure to add in in the story i did land the plane because that is uh, like maybe that's that part of you that feels like that's that's pretty cool mm-hmm. you know and, and it can happen to anybody i would imagine it happened uh, <laughs> i was like kind of feel like it only happened to me <laughs> Is that the line, like, kind of like when some when someone's breaking up with you and they're like, "It's not me, it's you." Right, right. You know, is that yes. the is that the line for uh, embarrassment? You know, where people say, "You know, it could happen to anybody," and you're like, "That's what people say mm-hmm. when it only happened to you." But does it? <laughs> Let's go check the logs. <laughs> right. <laughs> that story's still being told in Alva. <laughs> it probably is. Uh huh. You know, some some farmer working the <laughs> <laughs> some farmer that's working the uh, the airport, the runway down there is telling the story like, remember that girl mm-hmm. came over here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably gets passed down. <laughs> yeah, I person. was just sitting here, and all of a sudden, plane just lands. <laughs> like I was like thinking to myself, thank God we weren't taking off. <laughs> we're about to go crop dust some fields. <laughs> they probably were. Yeah. yeah. I imagine the airports probably, uh, I would imagine crop dusters use those type of airports, right? Probably, yeah. I don't know. I can't remember what time of year it was, though. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay, well, we're going to talk about courage, obviously. I love that story. I didn't plan on talking to you about that until (laughs) uh, it just hit me. I was like, oh, Rebel's got a good one. Um, So... We're going to, you know, the first thing we're going to talk about is just this whole idea of defining it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, but let's, um, let's put up uh, on the screen just uh, the Webster's Dictionary. So it's like everybody, you know, just see what Webster says about it. And I was actually surprised to see this definition. I have it right here. I'm going to hold up my sheet so I can, I can see, oops, what everybody else is seeing here. Um, <clears throat> but Webster just defines it as a, uh, a, a mental or moral, sh- the mental or moral strength to venture, persevere, and withstand danger, fear, or difficulty. And I was just surprised that that was it. <laughs> you know, yeah. like I thought it would be, you know, kind of like a really elaborate, like full sentence, not this uh, fragmented sentence about courage. You mm-hmm. know, and as I was thinking about it, reading it, I was like, you know, this this makes sense because I do think courage uh, i think you know it's a word it, so it needs to be defined to some degree but there's enough wiggle room in there to for people to kind of make it their own right right i mean kind of like the podcast says it's the many faces of courage right. and so courage takes on you know different personalities different forms mm-hmm. kind of depending on yeah. the person like when you think of courage, like what, what would you say are like just off the top of your head, like the common denominators you think would be involved in um, courage in general or a courageous act, an act of courage? But I think courage is more like that. I think it's more momentary anyway. So that word would probably be in my definition is, mm-hmm. um, is a momentary experience. Mm-hmm. I think for me, just kind of <clears throat> pushing through when you know we don't want to or when we're uncomfortable mm-hmm. um but going ahead and doing what we know we need to do right so some level of stepping out of the box perseverance mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. there's risk i think but i also think cur- courage is calculated risks so when mm-hmm. you think about like you up in that plane you were thinking in a lot of different scenarios right of right. like where do I land? You know, can I land in a field and is it going to land in this field? Or I, I would imagine at one point you probably even thought about landing on the pavement. Mm-hmm. Right. Sure. Yeah. So you're, if you're factoring in so that you, you know that you're going to have to take a chance and you took a calculated risk. And then even when you had to land the plane in the, at the, on the runway, since you can't, you don't know, you know, where, where you are, 
um, you had to at least examine the surrounding and just uh, hope another plane wasn't going to take off, which I'm assuming from an aerial view and being a, a little private short landing strip that you probably had a good idea that a plane probably wasn't. Is, is it that obvious or not? I don't know. You know, kind of thinking back, like, <clears throat> you know, I think I was so zoned in that I'm not sure that I saw kind mm. of the periphery, if you will. Right. So. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I think that uh, but that's what I'm saying. It's like there's just some level of risk. But, there is. Um, and, but it's calculated risk. It's not um, <clears throat> a knee-jerk reaction. I don't think that would be... Uh, courage it'd be fear probably mm -hmm. but i think fear is involved you know um in courage in courage because if you're not if you're not afraid i, I would say it's probably not courageous right right <clears throat> and also i mean kind of even going back to that you know i do think that when we are courageous we have to really focus in we have to be intentional yes. yeah we have to right no what our plan is and what our goal is to a degree. Mm -hmm. I think that when it comes to an act of courage, the act, when the act begins, you know, you're being courageous. Now you might not use that word might not enter your head as like that, you know, it might be more like a hindsight looking back on that. That was an act of courage. But like you said, like the intentionality, like I am acting with intention right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and so I think that's important. And, and the reason, you know, I called this the many faces of courage is because if you have a face that's in your, you know, it's operating, you know, you're breathing, basically, you are going to have your own unique flavor of courage. There might be some of these common denominators in there, but how it manifests, you know, will be unique to you. And so the reason why I think that's important is because how dare people try to tell us what we're being courageous about and what we're not being courageous about. Mm -hmm. And I think, so I think it's really important for each individual to understand for themselves what courage means to them. And it's not up to somebody else to tell me when I'm being courageous and when I'm not. Mm -hmm. And how to be courageous. Exactly. Yeah. There might, again, might be some common denominators in there, but how it manifests within you and in your life and the decisions that you're making, mm -hmm. you know, and nobody is walking around being courageous all the time. Cause I, I really do think for my definition, it's momentary. It's not constant. Like I'm not, um, always in a, I'm not in a constant state of being courageous, you know, like there are moments where I need to mm -hmm. be courageous. Mm -hmm. And in each one of those moments, I will be courageous to varying degrees. Right. Right. You know, kind of an act almost. Yes, absolutely. So to kind of get into that, into some of the complexities of courage, let's talk about, let's talk about this idea of paradoxical courage, you know, and, um, when we talk about paradoxical, paradoxical courage, courage kind of takes a form that is, you know, at most opposite of what you might think courage would look like. And at minimum, different, you know, just, you know, kind of, um, you know, breaks the mold a little bit or just deviates from uh, what you might, how you might typically think of it. So, for example, like, uh, you know, for some people, like when we see clients, for example, how many times in, do you, in a week, probably get a client that comes in at the end of session, they say, tell me what I need to do. Tell me what I need to do. Oh, absolutely. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And doing is uh, for, you know, like coming to therapy. That's that's courageous. Like picking up, making that call when you can feel your heart sink and, you're in the pit, and you feel your anxiety in the pit of your stomach. And you're like, I'm going to call. I'm going to inquire about getting an appointment. And I do that. Mm -hmm. that. That takes courage, just that in and of itself. Absolutely. And some people listening to this be like, ah, but like, no, it, like the people that do that are the ones that <laughs> are having a hard time with it, in my opinion, mm -hmm. like, you know, mm -hmm. like, the, you know, it, it is to, to look at somebody else that's seeking out help and say, you know, that, that they're weak and 
they're not strong that you, you need to be able to handle your own problems without asking some stranger to help you through it um that's weakness i'm like no that's that's courage and mm -hmm. and i think like the i think it's more flipped you right. know the person yeah. who has a hard time doing that that and that's the paradox right like this is like you know actually asking for help is courageous mm -hmm. where it might seem like no i gotta i do you know courage is is put is doing this on your own and you know you know buffeting your body and you know, uh, getting in the trenches and just grinding and getting it done. Right. And compartmentalizing and not right. feeling and not processing. And so, you know, even during sessions when my clients come in and, you know, and they might cry or they might, mm -hmm. um, you know, really allow themselves to feel those emotions. Yeah. I mean, that to me, that is not a sign of weakness. Absolutely. That is a sign of courage. Yeah. And maybe that's why, like, maybe... Maybe, maybe we're, we're talking about this, so we're just processing it, processing it. But maybe, um, maybe that's why when we do something courageous, it, it we might feel some level of weakness, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. you, whether it's embarrassment or just fatigue or just failure, you know, or something like that. Yeah. Um, maybe that just goes hand in hand with it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm -hmm. you know. Well, I do think that, I mean, when we are courageous, there has to be some, and I would put this in my definition, some kind of discomfort. Yes. I yes. mean, either weakness or failure or shame or mm -hmm. um, embarrassment. I mean, we have to push through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So, so when some, when you have that client that's like, I, um, uh, what's my homework? What's my homework? How do you, how do you usually handle that? Well, I mean, oftentimes, you know, if they say, what do I do? You know, sometimes I'll say, you're doing it. Yeah. You're showing up. You're doing the work. Oh, they hate that, though. Some of them do. Yeah. Not all of them do. Um, yeah, I'm mean, speaking in general. But, you know, when I say they hate that, I mean, like, they... I, I know what you're doing. You're, <clears throat> you're validating the courage that they're exhibiting. Right. You know, but when I say they hate that, it's like the doers... It, like you just told them you're not giving me anything to do right <laughs> like i already right. did it like yeah. no i want more give me yeah. something else Yeah, because they want to keep doing and keep right. going which is right. great um you know but i'll find something for them to do most of the time yeah yeah the way i i often even if i'm like planning on giving them a homework and they ask me okay what's my homework i i i, I proceed with caution at that point mm -hmm. i'm like maybe you should just do nothing you know, uh, because doing is the thing that's coming easy to you. That's 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 in your wheelhouse, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I want to challenge you with something that's out of your wheelhouse, you know. So maybe the thing you need to do is to do nothing. Maybe you need to not have a homework and, ex and just learn to sit in your helplessness mm -hmm. and, and to just let yourself feel your feelings. Like, no, I want to do, I want to do this. I want, and, I, and I understand the desire. It's like when you're in pain and, right. and, 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 you're, and you want to get it. Right. Too. Right. Like, yeah. So like if we're dealing with a client that's, you know, first session, second session, uh, just starting their process, betrayal trauma process. So after infidelity and the partner is super hurting, like I'm not going to be like, you know. Just sit in <laughs> just it. Just sit in it. For, that's not what I'm talking about. No, we're going to try to get help subside the pain. Yeah. I'm, t I'm talking more about. Like, uh, you know, after you've got a good flow um, uh, with sessions and uh, with clients and you're moving towards certain goals and you're through the crisis stage, right. basically, right. you know, they come in a crisis and not going to do that. So we get through the crisis stage, then we might, I might challenge them with doing nothing. And that's paradoxical. I mean, it's kind of that paradoxical um, uh, courage, which is really not paradoxical, but it kind of seems that way because it's just not how we typically think of courage is that just doing nothing just seems mm -hmm. not courageous, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that's how it feels to me anyways. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, well, and again, there's the an surface. element of uncomfortableness. You want me to just sit? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, like public speaking is like the number one greatest fear among human beings, right? But some people, so it takes a lot of courage to, to go and do public speaking. Right. 
right? Some people, it takes a lot of courage just to be quiet, mm -hmm. to not say anything. Yes. And we know some of those. My, well, well, and I was actually thinking that I have several clients that hate when I am silent. Oh. You know, just sitting in that quiet yeah. uncomfortableness. Yeah. You love that, though, don't you? I love it. <laughs> I love it. Was, a, was it Brene Brown that said, I'm a therapist, I can out-quiet you? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm def I'm one of, you know, you, you call, you have re referenced me as the big mouth of the group at times. So I would probably fall into the line of, um, of, uh, being, um, you know, needing to shut up. And that's actually something like that. I, uh, really felt like it I'm probably in my thirties when I was doing my own journey of self-discovery, I really kind of went a different direction in my personal life of like, I didn't, I didn't feel compelled to speak or to be the center of attention or and whereas before I was always just wanting to, you know, whatever friend group or, you know, to be involved and to be in and to contribute. And I just found myself just sitting back and just, you know, just listening and, or not being involved mm -hmm. and just being okay with that, you right. know? And, and, the, and so I would say for me, that was a, just one of those on a lower level, you know, t a courageous act in that sense it's not like a mate it's not like flying you know having to land a plane when you're lost you know but it was an act of courage absolutely although i will say like the closest i have to the landing the plane was when my son and i had to uh we we did not know that on our way back from dallas that we were going to hit a storm mm -hmm. and it was so scary i asked him later i was like hey were you like were you like scared during that the storm terrifying he's like he was in the passenger seat you know 16 years old he's like no and I'm like, he's like, was it for you? I'm like, yeah, I was, I was trying, I was obviously didn't let him see it. It right. didn't make him nervous. But yeah, right. I was, I was really nervous there for a while. Uh huh. And know? so that act of courage and, you know, probably kind of rippling into him mm -hmm. of, you know, dad's okay. Yeah. I'm okay. Yeah. And I think that is where the courage comes in there. It's not, you know, deciding to go on as, as you know, because we saw, that the storm was coming and we looked on the radar and i'm like look i think if uh, if we go now i think we'll we'll, we'll just it'll, we'll clip it we won't get the main part and mm -hmm. well the radar was delayed and we drove right into the heart of this thing and so i look back on that i mean thinking like well, that was dumb you know that was not courage it's just you know not thinking it all the way through but so to me where the courage came in was just me able to keep my composure mm -hmm. to, you know, to, um, think positive thoughts, you know, to, to look around me and go, look, none of the other cars are getting blown off the road. There's a lot of cars on the road still, right? you know? Um, and, uh, and I think that probably definitely, you know, made him feel safer for Absolutely. sure. Um, what I wanted to do was just freak out you know, and mm -hmm. park, park the car and run off into the storm, screaming my hands in the air. <laughs> <laughs> I can just envision that. Yeah. Like some, uh, like movie, like twister or something. Yep. Yep. Um, okay. So we talked about paradoxical courage. Um, we're going to talk about the problem of cowardice. I think this is really important. Um, and, uh, just to plug my, uh, Hannah's favorite book, cause she, uh, um, Hannah's our, producer over there you never see her but she works our screen and she loves it when i bring up the will smith book his autobiography called will because i bring it up a lot um because i do think it's a fantastic book and i'm like ah man why do you have to slap chris rock right man. but right. it does i'm telling you it does not make the book any less good it is really good actually probably help you understand him better but there's a lot of mental health stuff in there, and he and cower, uh, cowardice is a major theme in that for him. So, like, we're not going to get in too much into the book or into Will Smith's pathology. Um, but at the heart of how I understood the, what he was saying in the book, at the heart of his trauma is a feeling of feeling like a coward. Mm. So, and when I think about the idea of being a coward, I have a lot of problems with it. 
because I don't really, I, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I just have a hard time thinking it does, you know, because what, what is it? Like, what is it to you? Was well, being a coward? Yeah, that's what actually I was going to ask you. I mean, so, I mean, if being courageous is doing what you know you need to do and it's uncomfortable, then cowardice is knowing I need to face something and not facing it. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think we might think like the opposite of being courageous is being a coward, but mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't know if that is the opposite of it because maybe I, I kind of lean toward like the opposite of being courageous is just being, mm-hmm. you know, like, but mm-hmm. being a coward, like, like that's on like, how dare we determine somebody else is is being a coward like we we have no clue what is going on inside of a person when they have made a decision to not act on something right you know um i think of like the in uh, the 9 11 the 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 guy on the plane the you know the plane that crashed into the um uh, uh the pentagon you know and it, the I think it was one of the wives wrote the book, let's, let's roll, Mm -hmm. you know, um, then that's what he said to her or that's what she heard him say when he was getting off the phone with her, when he had basically called to say his goodbyes because they realized this plane's going down and, um, and they're going to take out this, uh, Oh, it wasn't the one they were flying it to camp David. It was the one that crashed that did not make it to camp David. Yeah. And it didn't make it to camp David because, this group of people on this plane had the courage to go and take out this pilot, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, the, the terrorist and, and they died and they kept the plane from crashing into Camp David. Um, but, you know, was there someone on the plane that was debilitated with fear? Or they, I mean, okay, we might say that they were not courageous in that moment. But I would not say they were a coward. I wouldn't either. Or if nobody did anything, would we say they were all cowards? Mm-mm. You know, I'm just, uh, so I just really have a problem with the concept of cowardice. I just feel like it's a, it's a word that is presumptive and it's, it's full of shame mm-hmm. and it perpetuates, um, you know, the, a, a lack of understanding of what people are really going through and, it definitely doesn't give people the benefit of the doubt Mm-mm. by any stretch of the imagination. Mm-mm. So so I don't want to go as far as to say there's no such thing as someone being a coward. I'm not going to go that far. Um, but just right now, as I'm thinking about it, I can't think of a situation. What do you think? I'm just thinking, you know, I, I guess kind of what I'm mulling over my head is, you know, if I am saying that I am a coward, like, to me, what does that mean? Yeah. Um, because it's not based on somebody else's perspective. It's based on my own perspective. Um, but don't you think it's, it's full of shame? It is full of shame. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, yeah, it has a negative connotation to yeah. it. And, and with my, how I conceptualize shame, like just, ha- just the presence of shame automatically um just you know automatically takes the uh clout out of the idea that cowardice exists because i'm like if if shame is a driving force of it or if it's a if it's a heavy force in it um if you know further validates that uh for me that there's just uh, no room for for that word, you know, to label somebody as a coward. And I think it's even worse when we label ourselves as one. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely don't think we have the right to label somebody else as a coward, but um, to label ourselves as one, I mean, that is shame ridden. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, do I need to feel like a coward because I, you know, uh, spent my whole life trying to lose weight and on my deathbed I'm like I didn't so because I just wasn't I wasn't able or wasn't willing or whatever to to take some of the necessary steps no you shouldn't feel that way you know mm-hmm. and I think mm-hmm. failure kind of 
comes in there too. Yeah, I was right? gonna say I think it's rooted in some of those early childhood mm-hmm. experiences. Yeah. That begin to create shame and begin to create insecurity and that idea mm-hmm. of failure. Yeah. Yeah. And so um I've even, you know, have just to put it in perspective with clients before I've I will say like, you know, um we're going to die someday. Um, are you going to, are we going to be on our deathbeds going, you know, I failed at life, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, I wasn't able to beat it. And I bet you there are some people that feel guilty for yeah. dying. Yeah. You know, and, and I imagine, you know, the younger you are or whatever, you know, like, um, like you're letting people down maybe or something, you know, and, so, man, we're so hard on ourselves. We are hard on ourselves. Yeah. It's just sad. So, but you know what's interesting when we're talking about failure? It's just something that just clicked in my mind. It's I've been getting into, um, back into, trying to get back into working out. I've been doing it pre- pretty regularly for the last couple of months. And I'm working out with a buddy of mine who um, has a lot of training and he's a former bodybuilder, like in his 20s and stuff. And, and um, it's been really fun working out with him, and he, and he'll talk about like you know we're gonna do this one to failure, and it's a common mm. common word used mm-hmm. in that I've come to understand in that community that this person's gonna to, gonna lift to failure, you know, and it's it's weird because it's like not really the word like if I'm trying to improve myself, not really the word I want to throw into to the equation, but it's used all the time. Like yeah. you're gonna work out until you're gonna push until you can't. Right. And failure means success, <laughs> you know, like that's good. Failure's good type of thing, you know. So it really takes uh re- really puts in a different perspective. So paradoxical failure. Yeah. I was like, I don't know how that fits with courage, but I'm sure it does. I'm somewhere sure. in there. Yeah. We don't have to bring it back, it's all right. Um, but yeah, the uh uh the paradox oh see we were talking about the problem with cow- cowardice, yeah. So um, I, I, like I said, I don't want to go as far as to saying that it's, it's, there's no room for the word coward, but, um, I think we definitely at, at minimum, we have to be very careful with that word and, and when we use it and why we use it. And anytime I felt like calling somebody a coward, it's because I was angry mm. and I was mad or right. I was hurt. Right. You know? Yeah. And so it's a very non-empathetic word, but. So again, don't know if, if opposite of courage is cowardice. I kind of just think it's just, just being, you know, because we're not mm-hmm. in a constant state of courage. Mm-hmm. All right, let's talk about the power of short-lived bravery. And so there's a quote that I have um, that I've stumbled onto this somewhere. I don't really know who the author of this quote is, mm-hmm. who said it first. Um, but I have used it for years now and it just goes, you only have to be brave five seconds at a time. Yeah. And that really resonated with me. Like when it comes to being courageous and it also, as you might have put it together is one of the reasons why I believe courage is momentary. You know, it's a uh, five seconds at most, you know, and my mind always goes back to riding roller coasters because I was terrified of roller coasters growing up. Do you ride them? Yep. I don't ride the spinny ones anymore, but I'll ride roller coasters. Yeah, you don't ride like the swings? No. The swings, it's so weird. Like these little kitty rides will get me sick so fast. Yeah. The inner ear as you get older. I mean, it, it goes kind of along with covering my grays and needing reading glasses, right? <laughs> I'm not there yet. I don't have gray hair because I'm bald. I have a gray beard. But um, my eyes are perfect, so uh, sorry. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think. I don't know how you're supposed to know. <laughs> Maybe they're not, <laughs> but I see what I see, you know, so I don't know. Um, but, yeah, um, the uh, yeah, doing the swings, oh, that'll get me sick so fast. Anything round and round. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, I love roller coasters, and um, but growing up, I was terrified of them. And, and I can remember thinking uh, – when I first decided to ride a roller coasters, when I got on it, I was like, and I was locked in, like just a sense of relief. I hadn't even got, it hadn't even started yet. I was just like, well, there's nothing I can do now. Mm. I mean, I could, 
ask them to unbuckle the seatbelt and everybody's got to get up and wait. I didn't want to do that. Right. So it was just like, you know, that that's when I first heard that quote, that's exactly where my mind went is when I conquered my fear of riding roller coasters. And still to this day, every time I get on a roller coaster, which I love, I still have to battle that same fear that I had when I was like 13 years old, you know, is mm-hmm. that, and I always remind myself, you only have to be, uh, once I step on it, I'm on it. That right. takes five seconds. You know, you only have to be brave five seconds at a time. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think about that with clients. I mean, picking up that phone and dialing. Yeah. Five seconds at a time, you know, mm-hmm. telling your partner, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. Five yeah. seconds at a time. Absolutely. And when you really think about it, like the thing that you really been wanting to do and you just, you know, you're, you're kind of debilitated by fear kind of a question to ask yourself is, all right, am I really going to let five measly seconds keep me from living the life I want to live? Right. Because it just takes five seconds. Because once you're in it, you're in it. And I'm not saying that um, when you take that risk that things are always going to work out, you know, because that's risk, you know, has to have a downside too, right? That's why it's a risk. Like, otherwise you wouldn't need courage. So a lot of times the fear that comes along with the thing um, is not um, completely irrational. Sometimes there might be some irrational components to it, but usually it's not completely irrational. But if I'm thinking about like my fear of riding a roller coaster is that, um, you know, um, I'm going to crash and burn, you know, there's a lot of irrationality to that. But the fear that comes from, it's just scary, you know, mm-hmm. it's scary, you know, that's rational, you know, it is scary. That's what also what makes it fun. Right. So like when I help my, when I help my boys have the courage to get on a roller coaster, we sat and we watched this roller coaster several round, several rounds. I said, now what? And I would say, all right, I want you to watch them get on, watch the people get on. See, they're all laughing and stuff and they're excited da, da, da. and uh, watch them get on. Okay, and now watch the roller coaster go. And you hear them yelling and screaming like they are dying. And then, um, and so now watch them get off, Mm -hmm. you know, and they're smiling and laughing. That was awesome and things like that. And we did that several times so that their brains could make the connection that probability shows that everybody's going to be okay at the end of this. And you're going to be smiling and laughing and high-fiving. You know, and so that's why I, I'll often tell people, like, you got to focus on what's probable, not what's possible. Right. You know, right. and yeah. so many times when we're debilitated by fear, we're focused on what's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Something bad could happen. <laughs> we, My son and I went on a ride here recently in Six Flags in Texas, and it was that, it was that one that looks like, um, it's kind of like a swing, but it's got it's got a pole, and then... Like, uh, and then people sit at the base of it are all the chairs, there's like 40 of them that kind of people mm-hmm. sitting around this thing mm-hmm. and the pulse just, it just swings up and down just really high. And as it swings, the base of it rotates. Hmm. So sometimes when you're swinging forward, you're facing backwards and cause you're rotating as it's swinging. And, uh, and he was real nervous about getting on that one. And but he did it, and it's the it's really it's the one that was funny, one of the funniest ones. I actually uh, told him I was like I used that quote. I was like I was like Casey, and I'm like, you only have to be brave five seconds at a time. And he's he's a brilliant kid. He's 16. And, you know, and he's the only person that's ever had a great rebuttal to that. Oh. And he goes, it's not so much the courage, Dad, as it is the regret. <laughs> Oh, so I, I, I was like, that's uh-huh. perfect. Yeah. Uh-huh. So we're going up on this thing and he starts screaming, blood curdling, screaming that I hadn't heard him yet. Right. <laughs> and I, I look and I'm sitting right next to him and I'm yelling out at him. I'm like, is that the regret? <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, but, so, but after he get off, he got off. How was the regret? Did he regret it? I don't think he regretted it. I don't think he'll go back on it. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't think it was that. And I don't, I don't think it was his jam. Right. But I don't think he was disappointed that he did it. Right. And but what was funny is I I think in uh, Oregon there was uh, that same ride and Oregon got stuck upside down. So all oh, these people yeah. are this this swing is at its highest point and everybody's dangling upside down and it's stuck. And I sent him a picture of it and 
he was like, that could have been us. <laughs> so maybe he has regret now. Um, he probably won't, definitely won't get back on it now. But Probably not. No. But I do think that most of the time in talking about regret, most of the time when we are courageous and we follow through, it is not something that we are going to regret. Yeah, uh, I, whether, I agree. Whether it turns out the way we want it to mm-hmm. or not. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, and that's a good point. Being courageous, like, um, courage cannot be measured by how well it turns out. Sometimes it won't turn out very well. Right. And so that's why, like, when when a couple, for example, they that are having some conflict and um, they come in and they're like they're they're constantly measuring how um, well they're doing based upon. Um, how an argument went, you know, like, well, I didn't, so I decided to bring this up, which takes courage. I brought it up and it didn't, they say it didn't go well. And they say it didn't go well because we fought about it and we didn't resolve it. Uh, And I'll tell them sometimes, I was like, you know, I would love for one time for you guys to come in on a moment like that and say, I brought this up, you know, I did something courageous basically. Mm -hmm. Um, And we fought and we didn't argue about and we didn't resolve it but i feel i'm proud of how i handled it i'm proud that i brought it up right you know i, I usually don't do that and most of the time it is messy in the beginning mm-hmm. i'm Absolutely. trying to figure that stuff out mm-hmm. but people are so often focused on the other on this other outcome of um and uh and you, it's just not it's just not a good measuring stick right right so all right well i think we talked it to death i think so too yeah let's be courageous we, and move forward let's, let's be courageous and stop doing this in, in this episode right what do you say yeah okay well thank you rebel for filling in for carrie sure and um we appreciate everybody who uh has tuned in to listen to us remember subscribe to our channel if you haven't done it already give us the five-star review on our podcast if you really want to be a good sport and you're watching this on YouTube, go to the podcast and just give us that five-star review so we can please those algorithms. And um, hopefully the information we're giving out will benefit other people. Always remember to check your show notes or the description of the video because I try to put in lots of resources and links. That's the whole point of doing this. And so check those out so that you can uh, benefit even further. So thanks for being here.